Scorpios, and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020, where Scorpio, happy birthday this month. When we bring in the 22nd of this month, we roll into Scorpio season, and Mercury is already rolled into Scorpio, so we're starting to get the vibes of this Scorpio energy very much so on the table. So if you are on this half of the birthday tribe, happy, happy birthday. Now this month, Scorpio, we've got three moons happening, and that is always interesting because the moon carries such a watery vibe and you as a water energy and that high vulnerability that you carry as well. I want to just tell you, be gentle with yourself this month. Plus, you do come into a personal, um, pleasurable time. You come into a time now where if you look at the chart, you can see that there are a, primarily the planets are to the left or to the east of the chart, which is a time Scorpio that gives us the indicator that really you're in charge. You get to decide your happiness. You get to make your own way. You really get to choose how you're going to show up and hustle in this world. So this month, as we've got all of this moon energy going along, um, we've got your co-ruling planet Mars retrograde. Give yourself some space. Give yourself some grace this month. Look for things this month that make you feel balanced yet empowered and full, okay? All right, Scorpio, we're going to get in here and talk about what's going on in the month. But first, I want to let you know that the eat and greets are going on. They are fire this month. We've got Sarah D. Haven coming over. Jessica Lanyato will be kicking us off in the month. Basil Farrington, Shane M. Nygaard, um, Giulio Pellegrini will be here. Natai, Shakira Tabor. And I mean, it's just going on. You can see over in the... Um, in the description over here, all of the goodness that's coming to this channel. As well, this month, I'll be taking a field trip over to Astrology University. We will be talking about astrology and world events during the summit, the third and the fourth. If you want to come to that, you can get registered. It is free in the description box down below. Now, if you'd like to get all of the talks, you can register for the all access pass as well. On the 17th, I'll be heading over to Achuta Bhava's Nightlife Spirit spiritual speakers series and I would love to see you over there as well it too is free all we need you to do is get registered okay everything in the description box for you down below oh and let's not forget that if you want to watch the eat and greets now ad free you can come on over and join on my patreon that is also in the description box down below okay all right, Scorpio, let's get in here and see what's going on this month. So right at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Aries. So at nine degrees, this is going to light up and shed all of that, that light, that subconscious stuff you couldn't see before. The veil is lit up. It's lifted. You can see more, feel more. You're in touch with more than you were able to be before the full moon. But this is all going to be in your sixth house, the house of health daily routines, your schedule. And I also include Scorpio in that house, your mental health right? What's going on up here? What are you talking to yourself? What are you thinking about on a daily basis? What you're thinking, what you're processing, what you're bringing in right up here is going to translate Scorpio to your body. So I'm always mindful about that body mind connection with you. You are such a beautiful, vulnerable energy, but truly the things that you are consuming are affecting your body as well. So I want you to have a look at it under this full moon. What do you need to end, acknowledge, or adjust? If you haven't seen Social Dilemma on Netflix, maybe, maybe consume that and see what you think about it. It's interesting. The things that we put into our consumption box in our daily routine, the people we have in our daily routines. You know, right now at this full moon, it's a beautiful time for you to look at, does this routine reflect the assertive solution warrior that Aries can be in your life so that you are living your best life in this area? Now, the ruling planet of this moon, or yeah, the ruling planet of this moon is Mars, and he is retrograde at this particular time, obviously right there in the sixth house as well. So I do think that this moon is giving you a big full... Um, amount of time to look at your strategy in this area of your life, truly in your daily routine. Do you have peace in your daily routine or does it feel all hustle bustle? Does it still just feel all confused all the time? What's your daily routine look like? What's your health look like? Do you need to be more assertive to make sure that this area of your life is as healthy as it can be? On the second, we see Venus entering into the energy of Virgo. Now, Venus is not traditionally known to be entirely comfortable here because she has to be very logical in the energy of Virgo. And Venus is like, I want to just let it be. You know what I mean? So Venus and Virgo here, though, is going to light up your 11th house. Now, one of the things I started thinking of almost immediately is, of course, 
The 11th house is friends, social groupings, your long range plans and goals, where you feel like you have your tribe at. But Venus here being very logical in the energy of Virgo, it makes me feel like you are trying to attract to you or it is naturally kind of attracting to you people who want like who want to be supportive. You know what I mean? They want to be on your team. They want to be on your tribe. There's this sense the 11th house makes me think of these very egalitarian ideas where it's like, yeah, we, we're one of. We're one of together. Nobody's better than the other. There's no hierarchy here. We're all just trying to do good things because we want this to be um, a grouping or a friendship that has the highest integrity that's available. Not to mention at a social level, Venus as a magnet. She's very attractive. So in the social work that you're doing, whether it be online, whether it be being a social worker, whatever these social energies are, I feel like Venus is really trying to attract some health, some healing. Virgo is a natural healer and some grounding for you in this particular Venus and Virgo time, which we'll have until the end of the month. On the fourth, we see Pluto, one of your ruling planets, coming out of retrograde here in the third house. So as Pluto was retrograde, he was destructing, tearing down, saying, all right, Scorpio, we need to really relook at that because we can't keep that over here. Let's break that down. Let's Phoenix. We need to become what's next. So now as Pluto is out of retrograde, that's one of the things you get. You get this forward motion to have your deepest desires come up for conversation, fears, secrets, all of them are up and out and available for transformation at this time. Now, because Pluto is your ruling planet and because just a day, a couple days later on the 13th, we're going to see Mercury taking a retrograde in your sign as well. I think this very much so speaks to this month, Scorpio, this idea of you reflecting Going back over during that Mercury retrograde, but being willing to transform and move forward with this Pluto energy into what you would like to be next. How do you want to approach the world? You're, you're coming up at birthday time. What do you want to set forward for yourself in this next world, in your life, in your community? Who do you want to be known as? What are you ready to transform into and allow that new version of yourself to kind of lead the way? Truly in your marketing of your products, your business, any of those things, is there a transformation that is available on the table? Because it's really not in life, it's not weird if you're transforming. It's really only weird if you're not. You know what I'm saying? So I think that this very much so speaks to that. And it speaks to a lot of the mental qualities. Because Pluto being direct here is in the energy of Capricorn. So this is your third house. So it's really your thinking. How is your thinking changed? How is how you're communicating with people changed? You know, are you able to be more vulnerable and let more people in? Maybe take people at face value instead of wondering if they have an agenda or you know, are you able to be taken at face value? So I think that these few days and this next little um, amount of time that we have to travel with this Mercury energy as well is going to be really good and really telling for you. If you do have contracts that need to be renegotiated, um, this Pluto Direct will help you to be able to do that as well. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Libra at 24 degrees. So this is right back up over here. So into the 12th house, a new moon. We want to plant these seeds of intention. What do you want to blossom out next? Now in the 12th house space, this can be your own personal healing, a spiritual awakening. This can be projects that you're working on. It's almost as if I have this sense for you that you're working out the balance of, of this world, the new world we're moving into, and the world that you were used to being in. You know, the spiritual realm and the realm of the material, you're looking for some kind of balance to be happening. I'll tell you too, because this is a new moon in the 12th house space, if there is something, whether it be a project or a person or a relationship that has been hidden, maybe you've been working on it and you finally are ready to seal up this deal over the next um, four weeks and then have that new relationship, you know, come out into the open, or it's something that has been hidden, you've been struggling with it, and the relationship could be to, um, you know, a medical treatment that you've got going on or something like that. And you're going to be maybe trying to bring it to an end or bring some culmination, some closure to it over this next few weeks. On the 22nd, the sun moves into the energy of Scorpio and I say happy birthday, Scorpio friends. Now we've got the sun here with that Mercury retrograde and this energy here, though, you're motivated. 
You're motivated to figure out who you want to be. You're motivated to communicate well. I think you're motivated at this time too to remember you have an Eastern heavy month to make your own way. Make your own happiness. It is absolutely nobody else's responsibility, but yours and you know it this month. So you really, I think, get to step into owning that as we move towards birthday time or move towards the next set of your annual birthday blessings that come through as you travel the year. On the 24th, this is a day I want you to make a little, a little something on the calendar. Venus is going to trine Saturn. Now, this is a day where if you needed or wanted to make a pretty serious commitment, um, it, it's good for it this day. And it's long lasting, long range stability is available on this day. So look at where Venus and Saturn are aligning in your chart right now. Remember, Venus is still in Virgo. Saturn is over in Capricorn. As those two houses are talking to each other in your chart, what decisions are you making around those areas in your life that you might be wanting to make a pretty serious commitment to? Because the 24th is your day. On the 27th, we see that Mercury who's retrograde in your sign, moving out of your sign and pushing back into the energy of Libra. So now you've got Mercury back there helping you out for the next um, little bit of time in this 12th house space where you've just had a new moon. So what were you asking to begin here? That this Mercury retrograde is taking your mind backwards. It's like, okay, well, let's re-edit. Let's reevaluate. Let's readjust. Let's reunion with this energy so that we can allow that lunar energy to sweep it in and forward over this next four weeks. Oh, I look forward to hearing what that is about for you, Scorpio. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, as we're going to close out this month on the 31st, we see the full moon in Taurus at nine degrees conjunct Uranus. This lights up your seventh house, so right across the street. And I think that this is really interesting because on the 27th, Venus will have also moved into the energy of Libra. So that's 12th house space. However, the full moon being in Taurus, the ruling planet of this moon is Venus. Even when we look at the Uranian energy in Taurus, we come back to Venus. So this is a shakeup in the relationships. A moon with Uranus conjunction brings a surprise. Now it can be a really great surprise, but it can also be if you have not been dealing with things in relationships, it's like it brings chaos. Uranus will stir up chaos to get you to make a move. And sometimes it's the perfect chaos that you needed to go, oh my gosh, why did it take me so long to do this a different way, to acknowledge this a different way? Whatever it is, this energy here might be really pulling on something with that Venus and Libra back here in the 12th house that is like, oh, I couldn't even see that before. I've been unconscious of that. That's been living in my subconscious. Oh man, why have I been so afraid of that? And as this moon, this full moon comes, you're able to bring some closure an acknowledgement or an adjustment to this Taurus area of your life and allow these relationships to get a fresh breath, allow you in relationship, allow the fears, allow whatever's been hidden in relationships to get a bit of a fresh breath, which is just nothing but beautiful for you this month. Because when it comes to the career zone and things like that, especially this month, one of the things I think of is it's very social. It is very social. You're looking to group, to tribe with people who have that egalitarian feel, but it's also social where it's like you need to be connected to relationships in the right relation because those connections will also help you advance forward. But you've got to put in the work, Scorpio, to allow those to come in there and for you to show up in the way that is going to allow these relationships to grow and to breathe and to expand as opposed to, you know, the ones that have felt heavy, which we've done a good amount of, of gardening, I think, this year to cut off some of the dead relationships. But certainly, any that are coming back up on your table, they seem to be coming through a, a surprising social zone for you as well. All right, Scorpio, I think it's going to be a good month. Give yourself a break where you can. Enjoy birthday time. Have a little pleasure. You know, I'm a Taurus. I'm going to recommend you have a snack or something delicious, but you do you. Whatever makes you feel good at birthday time. And just know I'm sending you lots of light, lots and lots of love for your next solar year, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton. I'll see you at the Eat and Greets on Patreon at the Summit. Just I'll just see you all around, okay? Bye, Scorpio.